Good day, welcome back. This is JustLovingPeople.com, the program from South Korea. My name is Lawrence and I have my wife Michelle. Michelle, welcome to the show. Thank you. So this week we're talking about childlike faith and yesterday we had the kiddies singing for us here in the mountain where we're broadcasting from to get you, to give you a feel of what it is being a missionary in South Korea and um, this is one of our favorite spots, just uh, a few meters from our house, overlooking this valley. Mm. People walking by. Annyeonghaseyo. <laughs> we just greeted somebody in Korean. Annyeonghaseyo. If you want to come to Korea, all you need to say is Annyeonghaseyo. That means hello. Anyways, yesterday I started to talk and tell my testimony of faith, how the Lord called me to the ministry. And I said that the Lord called me and He asked me, please be a donkey. I love that. God didn't ask me, please be a racehorse or a, um, or a Boeing 747 or something great. He asked me to be a donkey. That is so cool about the Lord we serve is that God can use donkeys. You know, the donkey is the least... Um, um, lovable in the horse um, category, you know. <laughs> so everybody is making fun of the donkeys, but uh, but Jesus said, "Please, will you be my donkey?" And he used Mark 11, the scripture from Mark 11 that said, "Please go and call a donkey because I need him." Now Jesus knew the address of the donkey. So my friend, do you feel like a donkey? Are you a donkey? Okay, I want everybody listening to me. Please say, Lawrence, you're a donkey. Michelle. Lawrence, you're a donkey. Thank you. Now I can say you are a donkey. And you don't, you cannot be angry because you called me donkey first and the listeners. So everybody listening to me, donkey, 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 donkey. <laughs> she just looked at me like, where are you going with this? Well, it's good news. Jesus is using donkeys. Jesus don't need racehorses. So Jesus don't need somebody who are this perfect human being, this perfect um, racehorse to do his work. He used donkeys. And um, he, in that Mark 11 verse, Jesus knew the address of the donkey. Jesus told his disciples, go there and there and you will find, if I'm correct, it was a baby donkey. Yeah, it was a baby donkey. It was, the Bible says, it was a baby donkey. And Jesus said, he's tied with a rope. And then, when somebody comes to you and asks, oh, what are you doing with my donkey? You just say, the master needs it. I love that word. Jesus needed the donkey. Oh my goodness, I love that. Jesus knew the address of the donkey. That was the first step. The second step is, Jesus said, I need the donkey. I need the donkey. And today I can hear Jesus say to many of you listening to us, I need you. I need a donkey. I need somebody to carry me into the lives of people. That is what Jesus told me when he called me to the ministry more than 20 years ago. He just said, will you be my donkey? And I said, yes. That's a very simple agreement between me and the Lord. And this donkey thing, you know, when I went on a mission trip to India a few years ago, I will not forget that morning where I walked into one of those Indian churches and I could feel the Lord walk with me. I could see the Holy Spirit walk next to me like you walk next to me every day. That day, that was one of the greatest experiences to see the Holy Spirit with me that day. Why? Because I am the donkey. I'm carrying Jesus. I'm, that day was, it was my turn to carry the Holy Spirit into that church because it was my time to preach. But next time there's another pastor or somebody who's singing. So Jesus used everybody. And um, you might wonder, so can God use me? Yes, He can. I mean, Michelle, when God called you, you said these words and I love that. That is, that, is, that is awesome. You said, God, I am nothing. I have nothing. Please, if you can use nothing, use it. And um, you can hear the airplane. So I'm coming back to the airplanes. Yesterday we said, 
flying in an airplane is having faith. Those people in that airplane believed that the pilot um, got his um, degree or his license and they believed that that airplane is going to land where they wanted to land. And so it was with me and the ministry. You know, Jesus called me as a donkey. So I went on this camp. They divided us into teams. They put me into the donkey team. And guess what? That Monday, I walked to my boss's office and I said, I'm resigning. And they were crazy. They went like, what? Are you resigning? For what? I said, well, God called me to the ministry. And <laughs> so everybody thought I was crazy. I mean, nobody understood why I did it. But I was convinced that Jesus called me to be his donkey. So I resigned. I resigned. And I think the very next week, this youth group called Zoe, they came to our city and they, had, um, and they ministered in a church. But it was more like a performance with dance and drama and music, you know, young people stuff. And when I saw them, I just knew that's the place where I should go next. It was a Bible school. So, it, and um, they had these pamphlets that they handed out. And I took one and I applied. And I remember the time, date, spot, not the date, but I remember the spot. It was around about 3 p.m. near my school where I finished my trick, where I got the call or the message, you've been accepted. I was so happy because the donkey was on the way to do God's work. So now I've been accepted into Bible school. Um, it's a um, Bible school. It's more like missionary school, you know. So they train you and they send you out. So anyways, okay. Now um, at that stage I had savings. So I saved up my, um, you know, money for retirement. So I, I, I used that money to pay for the first year of school, of Bible school. That was awesome. So the first year I arrived, the Lord healed me of many things. You know, it was my healing time. I've also seen lots of wonderful miracles and stuff happening, you know, in other young people's lives that year. But by the end of the year, the money was finished. And it is five. That airplane that you just heard. I was in God's airplane and I was trusting that God is going to put me, get me to the final destination. So by the end of that year, I've run out of money. I had six years to go. And I remember I prayed and I said, Jesus, I have three months vacation. I love business. Can you please give me a business so that I can raise the funds for next year? And I don't know, I, I can't say Jesus said okay, but I just, you know, did it. So my mom had this candy floss machine. She still have it. So I dressed like a clown and I stood in front of a candy store in a shopping mall and I started selling candy floss. And I saved enough money so that when somebody came to me and on the same day, two people came to me. The one lady said, hey, you need to move to another shopping mall. There's this awesome location. The second guy said, there is a donut machine for sale in another city. So I called that people of the donut machine and they said, all right, the money that I had was enough for a deposit. And they gave me six months to pay it off. So I picked up the donut machine. I also went to the other um, shopping mall and I asked them, can I sell donuts here and they gave me a, a spot right at the entrance and the air corns inlet happened to be there so that was that was awesome because in the end um, it sucked in the you know <laughs> the smell of the donuts <laughs> and this distributed throughout that whole shopping mall uh, and people would just come running like oh we smell donuts everywhere and we're so glad to find you but anyways the very first day that we got that donut machine oh, it was a disaster i knew nothing about baking as you know i'm not the best cook around and um you know so but i found this premix for donuts and i mix it with a mixer and it just ran through the machine the first day and then i realized now you need to mix it with your hand so, well, we started selling donuts. 
and we started selling them one by one, you know, and that didn't work. Because people came like, I want this on my donut and that and that. So in the end, I had these big boxes with nine donuts in and we had um, chocolate or icing or nothing. So we had only had three choices. And man, that that business took off. I had three full-time people working for me. My brother, he was the financial director. Then I had a baker and I had a seller. Because in that time, I also had other appointments to attend like um, go on some business trips and stuff so while I was in the bush you know um, on a safari something that was planned way before my donut business arrived the money was coming in and it was so successful like what in what were you doing in a safari? well I had this um, you know that's another story. It's just um, I committed to to go with some people on a safari, and so I couldn't cancel that. So they booked all the hotels and stuff. So I had, in between everything, I still had to go on that safari. But it was amazing. In 16 days, I made enough money to buy five donut machines, to pay for my whole year the next year, and I just started this um, this 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 powerful donut company with 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 the lord providing and um but then something bad happened they closed me down or they thought they're going to close me down and um i i will talk more about that on tomorrow's program but my point is just this you know if the lord calls you to do his work or to do anything i mean we're talking about missions but the lord can ask you Go and do that, or do that, or pray for somebody. Have that childlike faith. You know, these airplanes you just hear, as I said, we don't do anything. We just believe that this airplane will arrive in time. And we know it is dangerous. We know, you know, it can fall, it can, it can miss the location, there can be fire, there can be whatever. But if you fly, you just... You know, you, you, you just believe. And the Bible says that, that by the power of God's word, He keeps the, you know, everything, all the planets in their orbits. That's written in Psalms. And at that word we have in our hands. And um, even this morning, I was reading about Jesus that told the tree, nobody will eat from you again. And tomorrow I want to talk about the power of our words you know i don't i'm not sure but we pray we say jesus please um help us or please um, but i've realized we have authority and like jesus told the tree nobody will eat from you again we can tell that thing that problem whatever it is we can tell it be healed go away be prosperous or whatever the case might be so please um we're almost out of time. We, we've got a minute left. And um, this week we're talking about faith. And I really want you to get ignited. Because my heart was ignited. The rest of the programs, I will tell you just how the Lord in this week kindled my faith again. You know, we need to keep the faith growing. Well, my name is Lawrence and the program is JustLovingPeople.com Broadcasting live from South Korea. Live means we're sitting in on in the mission field so that you can hear what's going on around us i feel a few raindrops <laughs> that's normal on our live broadcast <laughs> michelle do you want to say a quick goodbye yes god bless you love one another bye-bye yes so just loving people.com is the website to go to we are launching our podcast this week so if you missed any episode please go there just loving people.com and you can listen. All right, we will be back tomorrow. Same station. Goodbye, God bless.